Hey, it's all with news, opinions, and analysis. Mm. Hey, it's all bringing to you guys the word of Warcraft. I don't know if that's gonna stick, but let's talk about things today, yeah? Just yesterday, November 15th, Blizzard dropped the 7.15 patch onto the PTR, just as they had said they were going to do um, during uh, the Q&A last week. I'm pretty excited for this, guy, so I wanted to take some time to go over some of the highlights or some of my favorite things about the patch. Funny enough, that's almost everything, so I'm going to go over, I guess, the patch. I'm going to go through a list right behind you guys in the uh, on the screen behind the camera, give a little commentary and feedback, and ask you guys, hey, what do you guys think of what's coming? First off, after a long hiatus, it is the Brawlers Guild is finally coming back in Legion. I think it took a break during I think all of um, all of Warlords of Draenor and they brought it back in a big way with new bosses and reward systems and new features. Uh, I was sitting in the Brawlers Guild in the PTR for a little bit. I didn't happen to see everyone get sucked into uh, like a whole raiding counter or or anything like that like was like what was shown at the trailer at BlizzCon uh, but even then everything was looking pretty cool. Between all the snazzy rewards and the pretty cool fights that are going on I think it's going to be a cool thing to entertain players that have been interested in you know kind of like a one person instance kind of deal. Before I get into the topic of legendaries, let me get a couple of things out of the way. Yes, we know that legendaries are like the worst thing ever to come into WoW. Yes, we know that you still haven't gotten the legendary and that crap guildy pug person next to you did happen to get like the super best thing even though they have no idea what they're doing with it. RNG is cancer and Nomi sucks. So a whole slew of legendary items were introduced into the PTR along with updates to a whole lot of them. I'm not going to go over every single one. Uh, there's like so many existing ones that were updated and there were a lot of new ones like I said. It looks like it's um, basically it looks like we're getting one uh, one new legendary per, uh, per spec along with these special trinkets which are freaking awesome. I'm glancing at them right now on screen and each of these legendaries have a uh, pretty high base stats, uh, either strength, agility, or int, and you know a couple couple secondaries which may or may not be good for you guys, but the on use is is ridiculously powerful. I'm looking at the tank chicken right here and it's and it's pretty darn awesome the fact that you can get uh, half a half of your life as an absorb shield and then that shield you know once it expires it's going to explode and harm whatever's around you. I imagine that people that are participating in world pvp are going to have a pretty good time with this trinket and anyone who encounters a tank uh, that's sporting something like this they're going to have a bad time. But apart from those changes two notable ones involve uh, the Cephas ring and the Prida's Prida's? I don't know how to pronounce it. The Prida's uh, neck, the thing that gives you the bubble. They've had some huge iterative changes since uh, since before. With the neck, they buff the bubble that you get from 15% of your maximum health to 30%, and they make it a guaranteed, uh, it just procs guaranteed. So every 30 seconds, that bubble's going to refresh. Think of it like sacred shield from from before but way better so let's take for example that you're a tank and as a tank you have uh, like 3 million health that's gonna mean that you're gonna have 50k healing per second pretty much all the time because it's a bubble that's awesome and while it's not as good for uh, non-tanks it's not as good for healers or dps that's still a lot of passive healing so imagine a raid where you happen to have everyone having that uh having having this neck that's that's pretty cool. Meanwhile, the ring had a much needed change of apart from crowd control effects. Uh, now it applies to interrupts too, which is a lot more likely to happen. At least like in a PvP or a dungeon setting. It's still not going to be as useful for raiding, but I mean in general, not all legendaries are going to be useful in every situation, even though I guess some are. It's still a much needed change, and I think largely for the positive. I think the whole point is... The whole point is to just make legendaries feel good. I mean, with these changes and the upcoming sort of tweaks or changes to secondary stats, I guess that's Blizzard's intent to return to, hey, let's have a legendary feel good for players. Moving right along, we have the new micro holidays that are popping up. Uh, it's easy enough on the PTR to take a look at what's going on. You just got to open up the calendar and you'll be able to see everything that's uh, that's been added. So like the first holiday that's going to come up, it's like November right now, but the first holiday that's going to come up is the Call of the Sky Arab or what they had called on, uh, the Encourage Mem uh, Remembrance Day. That's going to go on for a weekend and not just one day where people are going to be fighting to collect resources and do that sort of thing so they can plant the flag and the flag's going to be up for a year, whatever. It's pretty cool. I like this. It's a very easy content platform that, uh, that Blizzard can build on to just make up whatever the heck holiday they want, add it in, simple, easy content, ta-da! Moving on to professions, there were a couple of recipes that were added for enchanting and engineering and there might be more. 
So just like anything else, and I probably should have stated this way before, like at the beginning of the video, pretty much everything here is subject to change, whether it's the legendaries, or the features, or, or whether or not something's even going to make it into the game. So anyway, new recipes for uh, enchanting and engineering. For enchanting, it's kinda a eh, they're giving us neck enchants that seem to be pretty cheap on the material side, and all they are are just secondary stats. 200 of, you know, versatility crits, whatever the things are. And that's not bad, it's not, uh, you know, 3000 armor, but the fact that it's a secondary stat, maybe that's a bit better of a passive, I don't know. But for engineering, they made some pretty big changes. I guess this is kind of a response to some players, such as myself, sort of, that have been saying, well, engineers are kind of boring this time around, and some of their gadgets are just a little lackluster. So they're adding brand spanking new helmets to engineering, uh, these new goggles that so far they look the same on the PTR, uh, you know, the model that looks the same, and it might be the same uh, on live, chances are that they are going to be and I don't think that's a big deal. The stats appear like they're going to be random and you can't upgrade them but they're freaking 880 helm which is better than what you can make now with obliterum, uh, obliterum crafted gear. On top of that the on use effect or otherwise the gun that comes from these these gun helmets uh, it does a lot more damage I think <laughs> I think it was like a hundred damage before unless uh, unless I'm mistaken and now it's gone down and now it's gone up to 10,000 which is you know which is a little bit better and it, it's still not great but it's cool for I don't know picking lobies I guess also coming are two more obliterum upgrades that'll bring us to obliterum 10 or otherwise an 865 item level this should be great for folks that are still trying to fill holes in their gear sets or are having problems with getting proper secondaries on their stuff. And given that this is still considered the first tier of the expansion, I think this will be a good way to kind of uh, to kind of even out the power level between players who are just crafting or farming dungeons and Mythic Plus or Mythic Raiders and, and that sort of thing. I think that overall, well, at least when it comes to like gear and item level, I think these are much more effective catch-up mechanisms than what had existed before with like Baleful Gear and things like that. Now, I'm not a huge fan of data mined information or otherwise the stuff that comes out of MMO Champions, you know, string list, uh, but I did see something really curious with regards to the WoW token. I'm reading a couple strings back here that have to do with uh, redeeming your WoW token for Battle.net balance, so you know what this means. As you know, Battle.net balance is used for a variety of stuff uh, across all Blizzard games, including Overwatch loot boxes, um, Hearthstone expansions, and, and cards, to changing your battle tag. Basically, it's going to make most Blizzard games free, at least if you have millions and millions of gold. So this should make a very, very interesting conversation about the whole economics of WoW. Maybe I'll try to revisit that in another video with a with a big focus on the WoW token and what all this could mean. Although as far as I'm concerned, that Diablo 3 Necromancer, free. The last thing I put down here was the expansion of Time Walking, the uh, Mist of Pandaria expansion. Uh, all the original dungeons are going to be added in, so that I believe is a whopping six dungeon. Along with that, we're going to get another Time Walking vendor that includes a mount and toys and other cool things. The one thing that I I would really like to see is you know, the fact that there are six dungeons that are going to be included with this but not all of them so like some of the remixed dungeons from uh, old Azeroth uh, those aren't going to be included and that includes some of the ones uh, that came from previous expansions too. I'd really like to see two things one I want to see you know these remixed dungeons have their own kind of time walking event like I'm hoping that makes sense right that along with the Mesa Pandaria theme and the Cataclysm theme we have the remixed classic dungeon theme that yeah come on. On top of that though, I would like to see a little bit more overlap on how the time walking dungeons come in. I mean right now we're getting a nice and healthy flow of, of content with regards to the time walking dungeons and the weekly event system. Given that whenever an event like this appears, it appears for about a week or so, it makes it not that bad. It makes it, it makes it hard to miss, but at the same time, you know, waiting for the next Burning Crusade time walking event could take a really long time. I'm hoping that not now, but maybe soon, if they do decide to create even more kinds of weekly events, that eventually we'll see some overlap. So we'll see, okay, on top of pet battling, we'll also do a time walking event. You know, something like that. So that's pretty much it for the patch, apart from like all the different class changes and ta and talent changes, artifact power changes, all that stuff. You know, there's, there's way too much of that to talk about it and go over. So I invite you guys to take a look at MMO Champions uh, notes, take a look at Wowhead's notes, see for yourself see what's most interesting for you. Thanks for watching, like and sub for, you know, showing that mutual love. And otherwise, that's the word of Warcraft. I'm Soul. Stay breezy, guys.